महाप्रभु की तन नित्य गीता वादित्र माध्यान मन सो रसेना रोमांच कंपा श्रुत रंग बाजो बंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंदम शिव ग्रह आराधना नित्य नाना श्रृंगार तन मंदिर मार्जनाद युक्त भक्ता वंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंद चतुर्विधा शी भगवत साधो स्वादन्ना तृप्तान हरिभक्त संगान भजिता सदैवा वंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंद चीराधिका माधव्योर पारा माधुर्य लीला गुड़ रूप नाम प्रतिशना स्वादन लोलुका वंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंद वंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंद साक्षात हरी समस्त शास्त्र किंतु प्रभु वंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंद यसाद भगवत साधो यसाद नागति कुतोपी ध्यायम स्तु वंश यशस्वी संध्यम वंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंद वंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंद वंदे गुरो शी चरना रविंद मत समो नास्ति पापात्मा ना पराधी च कश्चना परिहारे पी लज्जा मे कि पुरुषोत्तमा युवती नाम यथा यूनी यूनाम चुवत यथा मनो भी रमते तद्वन ममो मे रमता भूमौ स्खलित पादावलबन वै जाता पराधाना तमे शरण प्रभु गोविंद वल्लभे राधे प्राथये ताम हम सदा तदीयमी जाना गोविंदो मया सह राधे वृंदावनाधीशे करुणावाहिनी कृपया निज पादाब्जा दास्या प्रदीयता वंशकल्पात्रुव्य कृपा सिंधुव्य पतीता पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम गोप्रेमंदे हरि हरि बोल हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज हु आर जॉइनिंग अस हियर on zoom as well as those who are joining us on the on the facebook my please accept my respectful obeisances and uh so yes prabhu if you can give us the reading order for today then we'll get started on the translation varshana mata ji khyati mata ji uh suruchi mata ji then vande guru ji okay let's get started Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry about the problem. I'm just trying to check on Facebook. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, yeah. Yeah, those many. Uh, I guess that's many we have today. Okay. Good. That's good. Mataji. So, um, yeah. So you know your order now. You can start reading. And but before that, I'd like to offer my humble obeisances to Dilip Kamar Prabhu, Dilip Bhai Prabhu, and to Vidya Bhadu and uh, Neha, to Achintya. Achita Radhe, how can I miss that one? Achita Radhe and to um, Nandini Kishori Mataji who's watching us on Facebook. Please accept my humble obeisances. Now we'll go ahead and start doing the translations and bringing up the first 
verse, first two verses. So who goes there? Hare Krishna, Translation. O oh, Purushottama, no sinner or offender is as bad as I am. How can I describe my shame? Just as the minds of young ladies take pleasure in young men and and the minds of young men take pleasure in young women. Simply let my mind take pleasure in you alone. Hare Krishna Mataji. Just as the ground is the only support for those whose feet, feet have slipped, you alone are the only shelter for those who have offended you. Who goes after Khyati? Uh, Suruchi, Suruchi Mataji. Mataji. Su Suruchi doesn't read. Okay. Uh, yeah. Myself. O Srimati Radharani, beloved of Lord Govinda, this is my request. You May you and Lord Govinda consider me one of your assistants. Okay. Manasi. Hare Krishna. O Srimati Radharani, O Queen of Vrindavana, you are a river flowing with the nectar of mercy. Please be kind to me and give me a little service at your lotus feet. Yeah, Haribo. So I'm going to switch this up and ask you for reflections on what you've read till now. I request to you, O Shirimati Radha Raniji, to consider me uh, as your servant at your lotus feet. Good, good, good. What else? You are, uh, you are a river. Um, river of mercy? Mercy, yeah, river of mercy. <laughs> okay, good. Wow, have you memorized that? Have you memorized that, Khyati? Yes, Mataji, I don't remember the first line, but I remember the second line. There you look, there you go. See, it comes by itself. Yeah, we are not going to push ourselves. It will come. Yeah, and one thing I have noticed, it comes to my mind in the day only when we recite in the morning. So on Saturday, it doesn't come naturally. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that means repetition is important, right? Yeah. Good point. The morning yeah. repetition is more important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. So we'll go and start reading from uh, from the Bhagavad Gita, first chapter. And um, uh, Suresh Prabhu, Charu Mataji is also there. She wanted to be added to the reading orders. Maybe she can go in. So after Manasi, Charu Mataji. And yeah. after Charu Mataji, yourself Mataji. Shodham. Okay, good, good. So, so it um, did Manasi read? Manasi read, right? Yes. Okay, so then we'll have Charu Mataji read. I'm just going to bring up the chapter here. I'm increasing the fonts for you. <clears throat> All right, let it come up here. And please confirm that you can see this. And Vinu Koli Mataji, my Dandva pronounced to you. Charu, all yours. Hey, Krishna. Uh, chapter 1, text 1. Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjaya, after my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage of Kurukshetra, desiring to fight, what did they do? Sanjaya said, O king, after looking over the army arranged in military formation by the sons of Pandu, King Dhritarashtra went to his teacher and spoke the following words. It's King Duryodhana. Cool, King, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Mataji. King Duryodhana. King Duryodhana. No, not Dhritaraj. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay, go ahead. Who's next? Me, right? After Charu. Oh, my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Dupar. Here in this army are many heroic bowmen, equal in fighting to Bhim and Arjun. Great fighters like Yudhan, Virat, and Drupada. Hare Krishna. There are also great heroic, powerful fighters like Drishtaketu, Chekistan, Kashi Raja, 
Purichit, Kunti Puj, and Shebya. There are the mighty Yudhamanyu, the very powerful Uttamoja, and the son of Subhadra and the sons of Draupadi. All these warriors are great chariot fighters. Hare Krishna. All right, Vataji, give me one more time. This one. Chekitan. Chekitan and not Chekistan. Okay. <laughs> we'll have this fight with Chekitan every day. <laughs> he will go away <laughs> from your psyche. <laughs> I try to be very slow so that I don't make mistake. Like in Pirmi yeah. ho jati. <laughs> and you know why this happens? Why this happens is because our mind overtakes. The, um, the, the uh, lowest are the senses. Above the senses is the mind. Above the mind is yeah. intelligence, right? So somewhere it is already etched there that I have to pronounce that as Chekistan. And so even if the eyes are conveying, right? Eyes are, it's a knowledge acquiring sense that um, uh, Manasi was asking yesterday, right? So it's a knowledge acquiring mm -hmm. sense. So the eyes are looking at that screen and they are, they, they are forming the letters there. But the mind has got something else. So mind has got a mind of its own. That's what they say. <laughs> so it'll come and then control the sense. So then it goes, eyes convey something, but the mind has got something else, a, a different agenda. And then it'll convey that to the tongue and the tongue will follow, you know, what the mind. So now you'll understand 3.42 much better. You know, <laughs> see how it acts upon all of us like that. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead. Who comes after Vaishnava Mataji? Uh, my turn, Mataji. Okay, good. Next seven. But for your information, O oh best of Brahmanas, let me tell you about the captains who are especially qualified to lead my military force. There are personalities like you, Bhishma, Karna, Kripa, Ashwatthama, Vikarna, and the son of Somdatta called Guri Shrava, who are always victorious in battle. There are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. All of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons and all are exper experienced in military science. Our strength is imme immeasurable and we are perfectly protected by Grandfather Bhishma, whereas the strength of the Pandavas, carefully protected by Bhima, is limited. All of you must now give full support to Grandfather Bhishma as you stand at your respective strategic points of entrance into the phalanx of the army. The Bhishma, the great valiant grandsire of the Kuru dynasty, the grandfather of the fighters, blew his conch shell very loudly, making a sound like a roar of a lion, giving Duryodhan joy. Text 13. After that, the conch shells, drums, bugles, trumpets, and horns were all suddenly sounded and combined sounds of uh, tumultuous. How, Mataji? Yeah, Is tumultuous, it? yeah. 14, on the other side, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna uh, stationed on a great chariot down by white horses sounded their transcendental conch shells. Lord Krishna blew his conch shell called Panchajanya. Arjun blew his, the Devdatta, and Bhim, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks blew his terrific conch shell called Pondra. King Yudhishthira, the son of Kunti, blew his conch shell, the Anant Vijaya, and Nakula and Sahadeva blew the Sughosha and Mani Pushpaka. That great archer, the king of Kashi, the great fighter Shikhandi, Dishtadyumna, Virat, the unconquerable Satyaki, Drupad, the sons of Draupadi and others, O king, such as the mighty armed son of Subhadra, all blew their respective conch shells. Hare Krishna. The blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious, vibrating both in the sky and on the earth. It shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. At that time, Arjuna, the son of Madhu, seated in the chariot bearing the flag marked with Hanuman, took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. O king, after looking at the sons of Dhritarashtra, drawn in the military array, Arjuna then spoke to Lord Krishna these words. Hare Krishna. Arjuna said, O infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies so that I may see those present here who desire to fight. 
and with whom I must contend in this great trial of arms. Let me see those who have come here to fight, wishing to please the evil-minded son of Dhritarashtra. Sanjaya said, O descendant of Bharata, having thus been addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties. In the presence of Bhishma, Drona, and all the other chieftains of the world, the Lord said, Just behold, Partha, all the Kurus assembled here. There Arjuna could see, within the midst of the armies of both parties, his fathers, grandfathers, teachers, maternal uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, and also his fathers-in-law and well-wishers. When the son of Kunti, Arjuna, saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus. Text 28. Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel limbs of my body quivering uh, and my mouth drying up. My whole body is trembling, my hair is standing on end, my blow Gandiva is slipping from my hand, and my skin is burning. I am now unable to stand here any longer. I am forgetting myself and my mind is reeling. I see only causes of misfortune, O oh Krishna, killer of, case, of the Keshi demon. I do not see how any good can come from killing my own kingsmen in this battle, nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom, or happiness. Hare Krishna. Text 32 to 35. O oh Govinda, of what avail to us are a kingdom, happiness, or even life itself, when all those who, all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed on the battlefield? O oh, Madhusudna, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, brothers-in-law, and other relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties, and are standing before me, why should I wish to kill them, even though they might otherwise kill me? O oh, maintainer of all living entities, I am not prepared to fight with them, even in exchange for the three worlds, let alone this earth. What pleasure will we derive from killing the sons of Dhritarashtra? Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. What should we gain? O Krishna, husband of goddess of fortune, and how could we be happy by killing our own kinsmen? Hare Krishna. O Janardana, although these men, their heart overtaken by greed, see no fault in killing one's family or quarreling with friends, why should we? Who can see the crime in destroying a family engage in these acts of sin. With the destructions of dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished and thus the rest of the family becomes in, involved in irreligion. When irreligion is prominent in the family, O Krishna, the women of the family become polluted and from the degradation of womanhood, O descendant of Vrishni, comes unwanted progeny. And an increase of unwanted population certainly causes hellish life both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. The ancestors of such corrupt families fall down because the performances for offering them food and water are entirely stopped. Schooling up. Uh, by the evil deeds of those who destroy the family traditions and thus give rise to unwanted children, all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated. O Krishna, maintainer of the family, I have heard by disciplic succession that those whose family traditions are destroyed dwell always in, always in hell. Text 44. <coughs> Alas, how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts. Driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness, we are intent on killing our own kinsmen. Before 
uh, excuse me, better be better for me if sons of Dhritarashtra, weapons in hand, were to kill me, unarmed and unresisting on the battlefield. Sanjay said, Arjuna, having thus spoken on the battlefield, cast aside his bows and arrows and sat down on the chariot, his mind overwhelmed with grief. <coughs> Excuse me. So we did that ritual of the morning, reading from the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Hari Bol. Give me a Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Okay, so let's go to text number 29. <clears throat> and before we go that, um, can somebody tell me what we did yesterday? <coughs> What happened yesterday in Bhagavad Gita? 29. The previous verse. 28, we did, Mataji. 28, yeah. My mouth mm -hmm. is drying up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Tell me what all things happened to Arjuna yesterday. <laughs> Not in this class, I'm so saying. Arjuna was feeling yeah. compassion and, uh, uh, and then his mind was overtaken. <laughs> Uh, he was feeling sad because he saw his friends and relatives. So he was his mouth was drying up and his body was quivering. Okay, good. So we'll continue with, with his Arjun Vishad Yoga <laughs> today again. So 1.29. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um Varshana Mat. My my turn. Vepe Thushcha Sharire me Rom Harashascha Jayate. Gandhivam sam sam shamsate one minute shamsate hasta twak cheva pari dayate pari dayate. Very good, very good. There's only one small thing. It is vapor yeah. vapor tush, right? Vapor tush, not vapor tush. Very good. Okay, who's gonna give us this? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna give us this minute now? Vapor tush. Trembling of the body, cha also, sharire on the body, me, my, roma harshaha, standing of hair on end, cha also, jayate is taking place, gandivam, the bow of Arjuna, shamsate is slipping, hastat from the hand, twak. Skin, cha also, eva certainly, pari dhayate is burning. Translation. <coughs> Go ahead. My whole body is trembling. My hair is standing on end. My bow gandiva is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning. So I just wanted to pause here, like, you know, <clears throat> this one, Pari Dahiyate. So I just wanted to, um, to point out that, you know, there is this Dah, you know, Daha. So, you know, Daha Sanskar, where you burn the body. So, yes. um, yeah, Pari Dahiyate. So that connection is there. Okay. Mataji, one question, Mataji. Uh, this first word, uh, Vepa Tush. Now this is Vepa Tush or Vepa Tu. Yeah, so the word is Vepatu, but when it comes, you know, together in, you know, there is Sandhi, you know, Sandhi, right? Depending yes. on what other word is, is following it, then the previous letter gets transformed. So that is what is happening. Yeah. Okay. And in uh, text 24 also, Mataji. Yeah, that's um, fine. Yeah, that's all Sandhi. Yeah, it's all Sandhi. Yeah. It's all Sandhi. So when you pronounce it like that, uh, in the words, you'll pronounce it as Prabhupada has given it. And then he's also telling you the split of the words there. Okay. So I have a hard stop at seven o'clock today. So that's I'm, I'm just rushing because we need to finish this um, verse today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Translate. There are uh, there are two kinds of trembling of the body and two kinds of standing of the hair on the end. Such phenomena occurs either in great spiritual ecstasy or out of great fear under material conditions. There is no fear in transcendental realization. Arjuna's symptoms in this situation are out of material fear, namely loss of life. This is evident from other symptoms also. He became so impatient that his famous bow Gandiva was slipping from his hands. And because his heart was burning within him, he was feeling a burning sensation of, of the skin. 
all these are due to a material conception of life. Hi, Okay, time for reflections. <clears throat> what did you hear? And welcome Garima Mataji to the call, as well as Bhaktin Shivangi on Facebook. Okay, go ahead. I'm just gonna get some water from here. I'll be right back. But go ahead, I can hear. I'm just, you know, going to the next table. Share your reflection. Um, the symptoms of uh, feeling um, uh, anxious, right, is includes the burning of the skin. But in the Sanskrit, and standing the hair on the end, but in Sanskrit it said Roma Harsha. So I did not understand Roma Harsha, right? I thought <laughs> Yeah, so it, 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 Roma Harsha doesn't mean that there is happiness in the hair. Rome means hair, right? Yeah. <laughs> Roma Harshan. So not necessarily, it's when, when, you, when the hair are standing on the, uh, are stand up, you know, that, that yeah. particular term is like that. But yes, Roma Harsha sometimes, <clears throat> especially in the Bhagavatam is used when there is really, uh, not exactly harsh, but it is again, sort of an ecstasy. So here, now here um, Prabhupada is saying that there are two kinds of standing of the hair on the end, right? So one, he, he's saying spiritual ecstasy and other is great fear. And then he says, Arjun is having it because not because of ecstasy, right? Now he will have ecstasy later on when he sees the roof of God, of Paramatma of, of, of the Lord. But an, an example of you know when the hair stand on end because of spiritual ecstasy, of course, apart from uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is <clears throat> Sutta Goswami's father. Sutta Goswami's father's name itself was Roma Harshan, and the reason for for that was that whenever he used to hear the katha of Krishna his hair used to stand on, on their end. And that was because of spiritual ecstasy, you know, like that, yeah. So his name was Rom Harshan. I just thought I'll point that out here. Mataji, quickly, Hare Krishna, is there a way we can learn this Sanskrit somewhere? Is there a class or anything anywhere? Because that <laughs> not that, it's very interesting to know. It is, yeah, it is interesting to know, but it is not important also to know. What, in, what is important are the purports of Prabhupada and the translation given by purport. Yes, definitely later on, you can go deeper into it. And, and Sanskrit is, um, is not an easy language. I mean, you know, there are permutations, combinations, variations, multiple meanings like that. Um, it's con I, I, ISP doesn't offer any Sanskrit classes as such that come to my mind like that. You know, correct me, Kathy, if, if I'm mistaken. Yeah, but there are plenty of Sanskrit classes online that people, you know, order. I mean, I might, my take on, I just learned my Sanskrit from, reading Prabhupada's purports only. I don't go and, and attend a formal Sanskrit class like that, other than whatever I attended when I was 12 years old, you know, which I've all forgotten in any case now. So yep. like that. In high school, in yeah. high school, there was a yeah. couple of years they taught some Sandhi. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, the important thing about Bhagavad Gita is not about the Sanskrit, not about memorizing the verses, not about, you know, how good we can do that, recite it. <clears throat> those are things that, that they're good. They're secondary things. The most important thing about Bhagavad Gita is that how you apply the Bhagavad Gita into your life. Right? And talking about memorization, I mean, we take great, great pride in memorizing Sankhya Slokas and be able to quote them and things like that. I came across, you know, a, a devotee here in, in USA, he had memorized the entire translations, you know, and it was so beautiful to hear him recite just the translations, you know, like how we quote the verses, he would quote the translations. And, and the translations by themselves are also very beautiful <laughs> and they are yeah. very meaningful. Yeah. So in the end, we have to apply the translations into our mind. Yeah. The tra in, into our lives. Yeah. What, what else? Yeah, from, from what you heard. Today. <clears throat> In this situation, his uh, arguments, uh, symptoms were out of material fear yes. and not uh, any transcendental, transcendental not loss fear. of life. Loss, yeah. it was basically loss of life he was fearing of. Yes, yes. And loss of life is material thing, right? Because death is only material thing, right? Spirit, spirit never dies. And okay. then how thinking can take manifestation on your body, on your emotion. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, yes. How your mind can do, right? So, <clears throat> then, and how to forget your skill also. 
Yes, how you forget who you are. It's very nice. Yeah, it's a very nice segue because I wanted to point it out. So uh, before this, before this, um, let's just quickly go and look at verse number four. And I'm just going to bring that verse up here and share that with you. Because I wanted to point out something about Arjuna. And of course, we know a lot about Arjuna here. But um, let me share the screen here and tell me if you can see it. Yes, ma'am. So, so here, <clears throat> what is the what is Bhima? What is uh, Duryodhan here? This is Duryodhan is speaking to his teacher, and uh, so he see here is saying that here in this army are many heroic bowmen, equal in fighting to Bhima and Arjuna. So you see, he's talking about Bhima and Arjun, and uh, of course, you know, in our context, he's talking about Arjun. So because he is afraid, afraid, right, of that he's a mighty yes, warrior. So we know that Arjun, and so what are some of the qualities that you know about Arjun, you know, before these two verses, prior to these two verses, what do we know? And prior from whatever you have heard about Arjun as a young boy, as a young man, and so on and so forth. What do you know? He's very goal-oriented. He's goal-oriented. Okay. Yes. He's Dhananjaya. Narvidya. Collect the money. Yeah, he will collect the money. For his brother. Yeah. For his brother. Yeah, later on. He'll do that later on. Mm -hmm. I was talking about before these two verses and prior to that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. He's the best archer. He's yeah. the best archer, right? Best archer. Right, right. He's the best archer. That is what we know, right? Whenever, whenever, whenever mm -hmm. Arjuna comes, uh, whenever the word Arjuna comes, we always think about Arjuna as the archer, right? Mm -hmm. How he had focus, how he shot the arrow in the model of the bird, and then so on and so forth like that, right? So the interesting thing here about, uh, uh, about Bhagavad Gita and about any Shastra is that when you look at this, um, uh, when you look at the verse that we are doing today, right? He, he said, Veputusya Shariremi, right? So what has happened? He's telling um, Arjuna that he's getting all these kinds of symptoms, right? His hair is standing on his head. Roma Harsha Sajayate, Gandivam Sansate Hasjat, right? Mm -hmm. so the important thing to note over here is that his Shastra is falling down. Now, for a, for a Kshatriya, for his weapon to fall down, right? What kind of a situation is that? Right? And, 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 and why is that happening? And, and you all said, I think Khyati Mataji pointed out that the mind is so strong that it will have the effect on the body. So his mind mm -hmm. has become so strong and whatever his thoughts are, whether they are of compassion, ill-placed compassion, whatever it is, his mind is so strong that he is... He is uh, the, the Gandhi is slipping from his hand, right? A, a weapon that you would have not normally give it, giving, given to anybody, that weapon is slipping away from his hand just because of the mind. So it just tells you how powerful the mind is, right? It's very, very powerful. Okay, so <clears throat> in the beginning, we see Dharyodhan talk so much about Arjuna, you know, repeating the, the words and things like that. So we know, and, and from our previous experience of reading about Arjuna, we know that he's so strong, he's so powerful, he's courageous, he's an archer, he's focused and everything like that. But now here in the Shastra, we find the word Gandhimam Shamsate Hasta. So, you know, this description is there. So whenever these Shastras are written and there are any words which are there in the Shastras, it's not, they are there for a particular meaning, mm -hmm. right? So, um, they are, they are there for a particular meaning, which, which basically means that they are trying to convey something to us. It's not that, you know, how we are when we are in a, uh, when we are writing an essay in the school and the teacher says, write a two-page essay. <laughs> so, and we don't have anything to write. We don't have time to write. So we'll put all kinds of nonsense in there. So, so just to make the two pages, right? Yeah, ask me for two pages, I'm going to do two pages. Copy, paste, copy, paste, like that. But here in the Shastras, it doesn't happen like that. So what they are trying to tell you here is that there is going to be a transformation. You're already seeing from verse number 28, the transformation is happening in Arjuna. And the transformation that is happening is that Arjuna is going to, is losing his identity. This is not the Arjuna that we knew, right? We know him as the completely focused, always in control, brave, very disciplined, aggressive, strong, that kind of a person, right? But here, we are seeing something else. That he, the Roma Harsha Sajayate, he's shivering. Yesterday he was shivering. And now his Gandhi is slipping from his hand. And he is known by his Gandiva. He's known. Dharnash Udhyamya Pandava. Few verses ago we saw that. He picked up his bow again. We are talking about Gandiva. And that same Gandiva is slipping over here because Arjuna is going to lose his identity. And the important thing is that 
what do we take from, from here for ourselves? And what we take here is that just as Arjuna had to lose his identity, I am, I am this archer, I am beautiful, I am intelligent, I am the boss. From there, he became shishyas deham shadi mam tam prapannam, right? So he surrendered to Krishna. So before you can really do the surrender to Krishna, you have to lose this identity that I am something. As long as you have got this thing about I am something, then the knowledge of Krishna is not going to get into you like that. So this is what his, and then you will see as we continue to go, then it's a very different Arjuna who's going to talk with about compassion, about family, about this and about that. It's not the Arjuna who will say, where is my bow? Let me go and kill, which he's supposed to do in this army, in this battle, by the way. Right? So, so this is a verse like, which is transitioning and, and shows the transition for, of Arjuna from Arjuna being a warrior to Arjuna who is you know, something else, a confused soul. And then we will see other traits come out from Arjuna and ultimately we see that he's a pure devotee of the Lord because he does everything for Krishna and you know, does that. So I'll stop over here because I have a meeting to go to and, you know, set it up like that. But I'll just take one last comment from any one of you before we close on this call. I really like Mataji when you said that we have to forget our old self and then venture into Krishna consciousness, right? Uh, that, that is really um, very nice. Yeah, and Guru Maharaj right. also says this point that I know is the biggest enemy. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, that is why Krishna is giving us two ears and one mouth so that we speak <laughs> yes and we hear more. <laughs> Brahma's designs are flawless. Yeah, <laughs> except for gopis who found one flaw. They said that your eye, eye, why do the eyes blink? Because for some creatures, eyes don't blink, right? For the devas, the eyes don't blink. But for them, because every time the eyes blink, they were not able to see Krishna. Yeah, but that's that's a totally different level <laughs> from which the from the gopis operate. Okay, thank you so much for sharing that wonderful point uh, with us, um, Kyati Mataji. And I'd like to thank those of you who are watching us online. Apara Gorangi, good to have you there. <laughs> and um, so we'll call it a day here today because I'm sorry I have to rush for, rush off for a meeting. But today is Friday, so we will have our Srimad Bhagavatam class as usual from 3:30. And I will also be reading, uh, I'll be again a little bit rushed in that task from 3.30 to 4.30 and then 4.30 I will start um, reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the readings we are doing from the seventh canto as part of our readings leading up to Nursing Ham Chaturthi. So from now till 3.30, if you have time, please do come in and join us. Hare Krishna. Vanchi kalpa trubhyas cha kripa sindhu bhyeva cha patita nam pavne bhyo vajnave bhyo namo namaha go premanande hari hari bo and by the way although Suruchi Mataji doesn't speak she was sharing some comments on the text and I forgot to see that so yeah river of mercy and Roma Harsha were some words that struck so thank you so much I really appreciate Suruchi that despite all odds you do come and join so I'll have to end the meeting now again have a wonderful wonderful Krishna conscious day do think about Krishna, think about the Vigyapti Panchaka that we read in the morning.